When most people think of carnivorous plants, they think of the notorious Venus flytrap. But there are other plants that feed on prey, like Drosera, the tiny sundews that fascinated Charles Darwin, and the exquisitely beautiful genus Saracenia, otherwise known as pitcher plants. North American pitcher plants are commonly found in bogs with low nutrient soil. A lot of your plants, they have what they need to survive um, that they get from the soil, and these soils just don't have it. So they've developed this really unique adaptation that they have a pitcher that has a sticky sap on the inside that um, attracts insects. This is the trumpet pitcher plant. The pitcher is actually a modified leaf that has evolved to hold water. The insects will actually fall into water that's held within that leaf and drown. Pitcher plants have many different tricks for luring in insect prey. Color will actually act as a lure for some insects because they might think that that's a flower that they're coming in to pollinate. The hooded pitcher plant. There's these white spots, there's less chlorophyll, so from the inside, it looks almost like a cathedral, like stained glass. And that kind of brighter flashes of light are attracted to bugs. The insects go inside, they get broken down just like our stomachs break down our food. Carnivorous plants use enzymes to help break down the food and then the plant will absorb the nutrients from that insect. A scientist opens a dead pitcher to inspect the plant's previous meals. Well, they're very well digested. Though Saracenia range from Newfoundland to Florida and Texas, most are found in the southeastern United States. There's a lot of habitat constraints that pitcher plants are currently dealing with. Habitat fragmentation, they used to be a lot more present on the landscape, but now in areas like these, you get them hanging on. As our human footprint grows, pressure on rare plants increases. Poaching is one of the concerns. When someone comes to a location and they dig up a plant without permits or uh, plants that aren't rightfully theirs. They're a charismatic species that people like, and so they're more likely to get taken. And that really is very destructive to populations like these where there's such few numbers. It is illegal to remove protected pitcher plants without a permit when they're actually taking them from their habitat. They're more than likely not going to survive. In the state of Georgia, the Department of Natural Resources and other entities are working to conserve pitcher plants. We've partnered with the Department of Transportation that when they have a project, they notify us. We can go out and survey if there's any species that we are concerned about. We have the permission and right to, to rescue them. The Georgia Department of Transportation recently worked with the Georgia Native Plant Society to rescue hooded pitcher plants beside a roadway. Hundreds of these hooded pitcher plants are being kept in a safe house where poachers can't get them. Today, senior botanist Lisa Cruz leads a scouting expedition with the Department of Natural Resources staff and Georgia Native Plant Society experts to find a home for the rescued plants. The question we were having is whether we should plant them with other pitchers or not. We'd be mixing up genotypes. I just have a comment on, on the mixing. This, I think, is still expanding rather well because of the management here. And so I would hate to be taking up microsites that might already have seed in them. Look. There's some sundews too. But we're seeing here some things that are from pitcher plant bogs in general. is toothache grass. So it's an indicator that the water levels are about right. As we walk back, we'll kind of flag maybe small microsites that might work. It's also important to get the pitcher plants into habitat managed by prescribed fire. It's nice, actually, Jacob, that you burn this because we can really see them. The timing's perfect. 
Fire is really beneficial to these species because it keeps it nice and open. Places that don't get burned, there's not going to be any space for these plants to find habitat or sustain themselves. The relocated pitcher plants will still face challenges. So it takes a couple years to really establish how well they're doing. Assuming we have a normal, if not wet, year, we would, should expect 60 to 70 percent survival. A month later, a large team gathers at the safe house in southern Georgia. Personnel from Georgia DNR, GDOT, and the Native Plant Society will plant the pitcher plants in a protected wildlife management area. The, the insects will come in and pollinate it, and then there will be a seed pod form in there. Thank you all very much for coming. This particular project is a really big one. Our goal is to do about 200 pots today. This collaboration is really important to, um, to try and bring some conservation um, for the species. Who's going to be the official counter? The official counter? Oh, we do need a counter. Why don't you be the official counter? Oh, okay. <laughs> there are dozens and dozens of plants to load up. They select the most robust plants for planting. The convoy heads out. The group has grown even larger. Welcome to Talia, Caitlin, and Katie. They just joined us, Brian, Erica, and Witt next to me. Jacob is in charge of a lot of the land management and restoration out here. A lot of snakes out here. Um, just watch where you step. <laughs> you see a snake, just get out of its way and let it go where it wants to be. For the smaller pots, definitely post hole diggers are the way to go. Make a hole about the size of that pot. And you want to dig it down probably a little bit deeper than what the pot is and then fill it back in. And the other thing is important, you want to make sure the bottom of that hole is touching the bottom of the pot. It's time to get to work. We need to go down this hill about 20 water. feet. The weather is cooperating. It's a beautiful day. There's some um, little rhinoceros here. So this is a good spot, not only because the person in charge put a flag here, but because the, the ground is really moist and this particular species loves to have wet feet. After months of planning and logistics, <laughs> it's all coming together for the rare plants. Delete it. You would take one hand like this and kind of squeeze it. So you can turn upside down. And finally, it's done. How many of the plants will survive in their new habitat? Only time will tell. But it's a promising start, thanks to the people and organizations dedicated to their conservation. Pitcher plants may seem like the fearsome predators of the plant world. But in reality, these stunning botanical marvels are fragile, threatened by poachers and habitat loss. Like other imperiled species, they need a helping hand if we want to ensure the survival of these devouring beauties.